Hall's 1819 rifle, John Hancock Hall, was born in 1781 in Portland, Maine. In his younger years, he did not make much of a mark, working first in his father's tannery, then starting his own woodworking and shipbuilding company. He served in the militia, where he picked up an interest in firearms, both shooting and designing. In 1811, he patented a breech-loading rifle of his own design. The idea was as simple as anything ingenious. In the breech block of the rifle, there was a movable block, which could be lifted by a special lever, opening the charging chamber. Loading was performed as in conventional muzzle-loading rifles, but there was no need to use a ramrod and to force the bullet through the rifle's rifling along the entire length of the barrel. As can be easily guessed, this made reloading much faster. After loading, the block was returned to its place, and special lugs pressed it to the rear of the barrel. The percussion mechanism was located on top of the movable block, which had both advantages and disadvantages. Massive mechanism blocked the shooter's view. The main disadvantage of the rifle was the inevitable breakthrough of powder gases between the breech block and the barrel, which caused the effective range of the rifle to drop by almost a quarter compared to conventional muzzle-loading weapons. The problem was solved by using a reinforced powder charge, but it wore out the mechanism even faster. Hall gave a trial batch of rifles to the military, who were very impressed with the rapidity of the new weapon. During ten minutes of test firing, 38 soldiers with Hall's rifle fired almost three times as many shots as from a regular army musket, 1198 shots versus 464, while maintaining the same accuracy. Hall received an order for a batch of 200 units, and he, alas, had to turn it down. His workshop simply could not handle such a large volume of production on schedule. This failure hurt Hall's ego, and from the development of weapons he moved to optimize the production process. After some time, he came to the conclusion that the main factor that slowed down the production of rifles was the need for manual fitting of parts. At that time, every product was handmade, and all parts were individually customized. Hall therefore came up with the concept of interchangeable parts, meaning that all parts from his rifle would be made the same and assembled without the need for fine fitting. To accomplish this, he completely rebuilt the workshop, equipping it with drilling and cutting machines of his own design, powered by a water mill. The level of mechanization was so high that the entire workshop could be operated by two, three unskilled workers. Special attention was paid to reducing vibrations to improve machining accuracy, for which purpose all machines were fixed on solid cast iron frames. As parts became interchangeable, it became possible to separate production from assembly and repair. In 1816, Hall again offered his rifle to the army and successfully completed a contract for a batch of 1,000 units. The concept of interchangeable parts caused a mild shock to the military. No one had ever encountered anything like this before. In case of a serious breakdown of any mechanism in a weapon, a soldier could not fix it by simply putting a new part in place of the broken one. The weapon had to be handed over to a professional gunsmith who either made the part anew or fitted something from what was available with a crowbar and a file. For testing, twenty of Hall's rifles were disassembled, the parts mixed up, and then the rifles were assembled at random and shown to be fully functional. Hall's factory design worked so well that it underwent only minimal changes until the rifles were finished in 1853. A total of 23,500 rifles and 13,682 Hall carbines were produced. Some of them were later converted to capsule lock. Hall also developed a pistol, but it was not very popular. The Hall rifle did not become a mass-produced weapon, but was used by some units, including the U.S. Marines. Some rifles were used in the War of North and South, and eventually, like other weapons of their era, fell into oblivion with the advent of the unitary cartridge. But the principles of mechanization and standardization laid down by Hall became widespread. Thanks to their introduction, it was possible to produce more items, cheaper and with higher quality. These things also served because repair also became easier and cheaper. Hall's methods began to be used in all industries, which eventually turned the United States into one of the first countries of mass industrialization. Interesting fact, Hall's rifle breech loaders were often artisanally converted into vest pistols. If you liked this video, don't forget to like Subscribe to the channel and press the bell so you don't miss new exciting videos. 
See you in the next video, where we will continue to reveal the secrets of the gun world. See you soon.